Hey everyone, it's D. Charles Jackson, author of the Boxing Encyclopedia. I figured I'd keep holding you over before the 60s timeline with a tier list. So let's rank the notable 70s heavyweights. Rankings Z to C. C is average. B is above average. A is good. S is above and beyond. And Z is one of a kind. There's no D or F because none of these men were failures. Duh. We're also only considering their accomplishments in the 70s. So no 60s reputation for Muhammad Ali and no 80s rep for Larry Holmes. No time to waste. Let's begin with Oscar Bonavena. So Ringo's unfortunate in that most of his reputation comes from the 60s, namely the duology with Joe Frazier. He lost his three big name fights in the 70s to Muhammad Ali, Floyd Patterson, and Ron Lyle. He had a DQ loss to open the decade too. Then again, he won everything else, hence his status as a contender a level below the big names. He reminds me of Razor Ruddock. Ringo's case isn't helped by his untimely murder in 1976, so he gets a C. Maybe he'd be a B if we also considered the 60s. Up next is Jimmy Ellis. He entered the 70s as the WBA heavyweight champion and was crushed by Joe Frazier in the unification affair. He rebounded, even scoring a decision over George Chevalo, but was stopped by Muhammad Ali. After Ernie Shavers knocked him out in the first round, he'd win only twice more. Some of those losses came to Ron Lyle, to Joe Bugner, and to Joe Frazier again. His biggest feat is winning the WBA tournament, but that happened in the 60s. Still, he's an ex-champion within the decade, so I'll give him a very generous B. All right, now for Joe Bugner. His biggest claim to fame is going to distance with Ali and Frazier back to back. He lost both, but he held his own well. He also lost to Ron Lyle, but he scored wins over some other who's who, such as Brian London, Chuck Wepner, and Jimmy Ellis. Then again, he also disappointed in fights he probably should have won, which stunted his chance at bringing a title to Britain. He did well in high-profile fights, but also lost unexpectedly. That's a weird middle ground to be in. So, I like Joe Bugner. And if I were considering his 80s work and his 90s becoming a minor title list, he'd be a B. But, as it stands, he's a C. Ernie Shavers, the possessor of the greatest one-punch knockout right hand. Maybe Deontay Wilder would like a word on that. He was streaky. When he was on, he was going to distance with Ali and Holmes and slugging with Foreman and Lyle. When he was off, he was losing to Ron Stander and Bob Stallings. Still, I would personally edge him more toward the better side of Streaky than not. 70 knockouts, and in his big name losses, he gave Ali, Holmes, and Lyle big trouble. He knocked out Ken Norton, Jimmy Young, and Jimmy Ellis. Ron Lyle was saved by the bell. He wasn't derailed by the Jerry Quarry loss either. He's probably champion if he's in his prime in an alphabet era. And if Larry Holmes didn't have superhuman recovery powers, Ernie becomes champ right then and there. If he participates in the WBA tournament, I personally believe he becomes champion. The Black Destroyer gets an A. Top contender and just missed being champion. Jimmy Young, arguably the most robbed man of his day. Young started slow in his career, but he did grow into a fine contender by the mid-70s. After losing the Shavers, he kicked it up a notch en route to challenging Ali. It was punctuated by drawing with Shavers. Outside of winning the matches he was supposed to, he beat Ron Lau twice and retired a George Foreman, who was on his way back to the title and looked unstoppable again. He arguably beat both Ken Norton and Muhammad Ali. The Ozzy Ocasio duology signaled his peak end, and had he been given the Norton win, he would have been named WBC champ and faced Larry Holmes. If he doesn't duck out of the ring when in trouble, maybe he beats Muhammad Ali. He beat Lyle, but lost out on the earlier shot at Ali. 
The guy just wasn't meant to be champ, it seems. So, solid contender who was robbed a good deal. Jimmy Young is A tier. Now, let's talk about Ron Lyle. The counter punching slugger. Outside of Lynn Ball, he beat everyone he was supposed to. Jerry Quarry took his O and he fell to Jimmy Young twice. George Foreman in the greatest slugfest ever, and Muhammad Ali in a fight he was winning until he was overwhelmed at the end. He won the Ernie Shavers War in a comeback. He beat Jimmy Ellis, Oscar Bonavina, and Joe Bugner. Another solid contender who probably becomes champ in an alphabet era. I'm personally giving Ron Lyle an A. Jerry Corey, perhaps the most notable contender of the era to never win the big one. Only Ali, Frazier, and Norton claimed his name for their resumes in the 70s. Everyone else got the smoke. Mac Foster, Ron Lyle, Ernie Shavers, and the rest of the division just couldn't get past him. Even against the three who did beat him, he was no pushover. He's definitely a champion in an alphabet era. His career is made all the more impressive in that his work in the 60s is also notable, though we can't count it here. The Bell Flower Bomber is A tier. He's not S due to his still being a tier below the fighters you'll see here. Also, because the other A tier fighters he beat hadn't yet matured into their best selves when they faced Quarry. Larry Holmes, a personal favorite of mine. The WBC heavyweight champion of the world to end the decade. That came in one of the heavyweight history's greatest title fights against Ken Norton, and Larry fought through injury to edge it out. He also won two big fights over Ernie Shavers at his best. Unfortunately for Larry, most of his legacy lies in the 80s, so with that, he'd probably be Z-tier. But as it stands, I'm still going to give him an S for being undefeated and capturing the title against one of the era's best. Shavers is icing on the cake. I'm giving the Eastern Assassin the benefit of the doubt here too in hypothetical matchups against likewise S-tier fighters. Ken Norton, a black Hercules who thought and grew rich. The man who turned his career around after the Jose Luis Garcia knockout loss and never looked back. He broke into the main event scene with his jaw-breaking upset over Ali. Only Ali, Foreman, Holmes, and Shavers beat him from that point on. You can argue that he won all three fights against Ali. Foreman and Shavers are two of the hardest punches ever, so the argument that Sluggers were his weakness has that asterisk. He lost the Holmes title bout in the final round. The Black Hercules was for real. His resume includes Muhammad Ali, Jerry Quarry, revenge over Jose Luis Garcia, and Jimmy Young. He's the only man to ever become heavyweight champ without winning a title bout. Elite contender and definitely champion in an alphabet era. Norton is S tier. He's arguably in league with the top guys and definitively higher than the top contenders. Joe Frazier. Let me make a case for Smoke and Joe. Hear me out here. Now, my comment sections and some other comment sections I've seen have been filled with some real disrespect for the champ. He was only ever defeated by Ali and Foreman, two top five heavyweights of all time, depending on who you ask. Foreman was his kryptonite, and he still fought him twice. You can argue he should have won all three against Ali. Now, hear me out here. Ali's illegal holding in their second bout could have led to a DQ. And if Ali had actually quit in Manila, as he said he would have, Joe would have had him. Now, I don't personally believe he won all three, but the argument is there. He beat Jimmy Ellis twice, Muhammad Ali, Joe Bugner, and Jerry Quarry. He beat more names in the 60s who remained credible in the 70s. Now, though we won't be counting his 60s exploits, we don't need to. Frazier is S-tier without question. If Ali and Foreman don't exist, he's the best of the era by a huge margin. Big George Foreman, the arguable scariest entity in boxing history. Undefeated and undisputed until the perfect storm saw him fall to the greatest. He only lost to Ali and Jimmy Young. And the Young loss was another case of circumstance and his not taking the fight as serious as he should have. Now, not many will argue against George winning rematches against both those men either. 
He crushed Frazier and Norton, the two men who beat Ali. He crushed the who's who of the division, including Gregorio Peralta, George Chevalo, and Ron Lyle. Now, it's hard to argue he wouldn't have beaten the others he missed facing, like Ernie Shavers and Jerry Quarry. If it weren't for Muhammad Ali, he's the king for as long as he wanted to be. And his 90s exploits ascend him to the GOAT talk, but that doesn't count here. So, George Foreman is S-tier and not Z, only because of the final man here. Muhammad Ali. The one that doesn't need to be explained. He is the greatest. He emerged as the best of the best era in heavyweight history while being past his best himself. Frazier, Foreman, Quarry, Ellis, Young, Lyle, Shavers, Spinks, Chevallo, Bonavina, Patterson, Bugner, and Norton, along with the rest of the who's who. He avenged both losses to Frazier and Norton, his kryptonites. His 60s exploits are not needed to put him in the GOAT talk, but they secure it. There's no question, Muhammad Ali is the tier, the gold standard of the golden age. Disagree? Let me know where you'd put them on your own list. Now, I got some stuff cooking for y'all this year. I hope you're ready. 60s timeline is coming along with a passion project I've been stitching together for a while now. More shorts, including the Fight of the Year series, are still to come. I hope you've been enjoying the polls too. I'm also aiming to get the 2000s timeline done this year. So, two big timelines this year? Uh huh. It's going to be a good year. I'll see you soon, all right? This is TCJ, author of the Boxing Encyclopedia. Peace, I'm out. See you next time.